what is happening people today i want to show you a quick tutorial video on how to fix a stutter and lag from youtube when using an apple device i.e macbook imac um, macbook pro um, something along them lines it, this should work for pc as well but in my experience i haven't had this issue on a pc base like um, laptops or whatever it is that's un not apple related i haven't had an issue since i've had a macbook i had an issue from the moment i got it um from just watching a youtube video and what the problem was i was experienced was lags and dips in videos so sometimes you'll be watching a video and it would freeze and then it would just continue but when it continue it don't continue from where it froze it would like miss half a second or a second and continue the, the actual video now um, there will be other issues where buffering won't buffer to the full to the fullest so you know when you're watching a YouTube video at the bottom of the screen you would have the little white translucent kind of bar that's buffering in the um, play timeline um, in my case sometimes that wouldn't fully buffer and when it does I would sit there because I've tried it I've sat there I've let it fully buffered and then I've hit play on the same video that was lagging while it was buffering to see if it was just an internet connection connection issue now when it was fully fully um, buffered I would still get those freezes or a dip or a lag or stutter so I looked onto Google to try and find a solution I couldn't find one at the time however I, I found a permanent fix that worked for me so I'm hoping this is gonna work for everyone that has a MacBook and is having these issues now this could probably work with um, PC if you're having this issue but um, I don't think PC has most of the issues a MacBook is like kind of limited nowadays in stuff you want to do um, don't flame me for saying that so the first thing we're gonna do we're gonna open up your Safari browser and I've already got my BT rotor um, loaded up for you so just those of you who don't know how to get your um, IP address you can Google search it or look at the back of the rotor you would have it would be like 192 or 168 or whatever whatever just type that into your address browser and it will come up to the BT smart manager now if yours is not BT it will come up to your own proprietary router BIOS <laughs> is the best way to explain it so that would come up now the ideas what I'm going to show you in this video you can you can translate that on a non BT router just look for the same types of settings that I'm going to show you now and look for it on your own router <coughs> sorry um, so now we're gonna go into advanced settings and in advanced settings we're gonna get another page like this now we want to look for the wireless setting which is just here it just says wireless so once we click that enter our password hit continue we'll be greeted with a page like this this is advanced settings now people don't be too scared about advanced settings it's just something to do something extra it's, it's well BT's layout is very simplistic that you it's easier to understand um, what we're going to do here we're going to see 2.4 and 5 gigahertz now the two difference between the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz is based on frequency and it's based on the amount of data and bandwidth that can be traveled at one given time now we're going to go to separate band we're going to click that as on or enabled once that's on our router would now be recognized twice but I'll get into that in the next part just in a little bit so our router would then try to be recognized as two separate routers but in one body so you have 2.4 separate from the 5 gigahertz now with BT they got this option which I'll go back in a second to show you the, the screen called smart hub manager or something like that what that does it tries to find the correct frequency for a for an 
for an allocated device or actually not even allocated allocated is when you're giving it yourself um, it will try and find it will do an automatically estimate on what gigahertz to allocate to a device ie I have a note 8 so my router might be like oh, okay he can he's acceptable to take a 5 gigahertz bandwidth let's give him 5 that don't always work because I'm still connected on 2.4 not saying 2.4 is bad it's very good most modern households most most households sorry are on 2.4 this is this if you have a separate band this is where it will come in handy for those that experience YouTube lag on MacBook devices and don't have the ability to have two separate bands I apologize you might as well click off the video because I don't have a solution for that I do apologize um, maybe someone in the comments can give a solution for someone that don't have two separate bands okay so once we've enabled this um, the channels I've once on channel 1 and once on channel 44 now the only reason for me doing um, one very extreme number is that when you have separate channels it makes it let's say okay let's say my next door neighbor had BT um, router and their network is connected on channel 1 because it's straight out the box like everyone else when you experience router issues or connectivity issues sometimes it's down to the frequency being interfered from someone else's channel that is the same brand so BT is very popular in the UK so I've put mine to the extreme 44 on the chances that my downstairs or next door is not going to have 44 enabled. So when my device connects, it's cycling through, it would send the information to the rotor. Hey, I want to connect. It would then look at the channels available, channel 1 and channel 44. Channel 44 being the extreme where no one else else is going to have 44, just myself. So it would connect to 44. That's like a very basic understanding on the channels. You can get more information on um, YouTube and Google, but even if I'm wrong, that's the concept of it. Um, so you don't have to change the channel, but if you're still experiencing issues, then you can change the channel. So once once again, we've separated the bands, you will get network name now. You can change this to your own, own, own accord. Um, my one I just kept as default. So the five gigahertz section column I now have BT hub 6 and then at the end is hyphen 5 and 2.4 gigahertz column is BT hub 6 and there is no number 5 so once that's done I'm just going to hit save on a BT you'll probably get a pink little screen here saying um, applying settings or saving to um, router mine's already done so it's not going to do that um, then I'm just going to go back and quickly show you what to turn off because it helped with me anyway. So we're going to go back to home and this smart setup, the BT smart setup, online setup, wizard, all of this malarkey, turn it off. You don't need it unless, unless you feel comfortable having this on, then leave it on. But if you're doing all these settings, chances are you want this off. So once that's off, I'm going to, actually I'll leave it on the BT thing because it's white background. You'll see this better. Bring your mouse to the top and to the Wi-Fi section. And now we're going to see BT hub, um, hub 6 and at the end is hyphen 5. And now on the same list, you're going to get BT hub 6 without the 5. So by you separating the bands has now made it as if your, your computer is looking for two separate routers. Now, I'm going to give you a little fix because if you're doing this, chances are when you set it up your internet connectivity, um, it was based on whatever came out the box from your router. So it will probably be 2.4. Um, now, whenever you turn on and off your PC or Mac or whatever it is, it would always connect to the the default one we don't want that we want to connect to the 5 gigahertz one so the quick fix to do that and this would apply on a PC as well just open your network settings in my case it's open network preferences we'll open that and where it says the Wi-Fi will be kind of great 
and here where it says network name now if it was to your default it would be on the BT hub 6 without the 5 you want to change it to the 5 gigahertz column so whatever you named the new rotor to in my case I left it default but you want to look for it on this section here once you find it like I said mine's got the hyphen 5 so it just says 5 you want to ch ch check this box automatically join to this network once you've done that you'll hit apply exit the screen <laughs> whenever you turn off your Mac you turn it back on it would automatically look for um, the 5 gigahertz connection straight away now if this video has helped you reduce the lag because it's permanently fixed it for me if this video has helped you reduce the lag um, do leave a comment and a thumbs up if you're new around here make sure you subscribe it's been your boy london's finest gamer